this video addresses many of the concerns that have been raised in the recent years concerning HHO or hydrogen oxygen production as it is applied to the internal combustion engine. Claims have been, have been made that the introduction of the hydrogen oxygen mixture into the air charge of an internal combustion engine increases its efficiency due to the increased flame propagation speed promotes a more complete and total combustion of the air fuel charge within the cylinder. Up until recently it has been very difficult to access to find supporting scientific peer-reviewed published data that supports the claims and the observations that have been made by HHO supporters, builders, and designers. Claims that include ones that have been made by myself. I have posted data runtime tests that demonstrate the viability of HHO as implementation into the internal combustion engine to reduce the amount of fuel consumption and emissions of that device. I ran multiple generator tests on a stationary genset application that clearly demonstrated and was clearly documented savings in fuel consumption. The attacks that have been made are that there is no scientific peer-reviewed published supporting data. It has been come to my attention that university tests have been done, peer-reviewed and published in the scientific community that support the claims that I have been making that support the viability of HHO injection technology. What you are looking at is page one of a document published in a peer-reviewed and accepted scientific journal. This test was run in Australia by S. Barry and M. Mohamed Esmiel at the Sustainable Energy Center School of Advanced Manufacturing and en Mechanical Engineering, University of South Australia. This document is a peer-reviewed university scientific study on the viability examining claims of HHO injection into the internal combustion engine. And much to my happiness, much to my excitement, this test was done on a stationary generator, diesel powered nonetheless, which of course interests me greatly because as I have recently announced, the focus of my company is being directed not on vehicles but on stationary generator applications which ultimately will be used in vehicles as onboard charging systems for series hybrid electric vehicle applications. So this study is part of my supporting evidence that I am presenting to the skeptical community that HHO injection does in fact work. Here is the first page of that study published and accepted on the 21st of August 2009. As I said, published by Elsevier in Fuel Magazine and you can see the credentials of this publication at their journal homepage listed at the top of the document www.elsevier.com locate fuel. In the abstract, it's the results are discussed and clearly stated as the following. Results show that by using 4.84%, 6.06%, and 6.12% total diesel equivalent of H2O2 mixture, the brake thermal efficiency increased from 32% to 34.6%, 32.9%, to 35.8%, and 34.7% to 36.3% at 19 kilowatts, 22 kilowatts, and 28 kilowatts respectively. These resulted in 15.07%, 15.16%, and 14.96% 
fuel savings. It also says the emissions of hydrocarbons, CO2, and CO decreased, whereas the NOx emissions increase. And I will address the NOx emissions results uh, later in this video. First, let's go over the experimental apparatus, the test apparatus. A dynamometer was used on the engine and loaded under a variety of load conditions between 2, two kilograms and 10 kilograms. Compared to diesel, and this is one of the claims that I've made and I want to, I want to elaborate on. Published in this journal, it states, compared to diesel, hydrogen has wider flammability limits, higher flame speed, and faster burning velocity, which enables engines to run on very lean mixtures. Go to my Genset videos that are posted here on my channel and see and witness for yourself the data sheet, the data spread that shows that this statement, which is being made in this scientifically pub published peer-reviewed university study, that correlates with this statement. On the second page of this paper, it goes into discussing some of the properties and characteristics of hydrogen. But part two, it goes on to explain the experimental setups and procedures. It says a Hino 40WD four-cylinder direct injection and water-cooled diesel engine was used in this experiment. The detail of the engine is listed in Table 1, where, as you can see, all of the different parameters of this engine are indeed listed. The mixture of hydrogen-oxygen was generated by electrolyzing water using an oxy-hydrogen generator machine, Epoch EP-500. In order to simplify the setup, the H2O2 mixture was generated using 24 volts of external power. Now, this is a, item, a statement that may cause many of the skeptics to raise up in unison to say the test is invalid. However, reading carefully the document, which I know that you will, says, in reality, it will be produced from the battery slash alternator arrangement of the engine. The power needed to produce the H2O2 mixture is included as input energy to the engine. That means that even though the cell was not directly connected to the output power of the generator, it was included in the final calculations. Therefore, the system can be viewed as a quote-unquote closed system with no external power based on those calculations. On this statement, published in a peer-reviewed scientific journal, a study done by an accredited university. One point of contention that I do have, there's actually two points of contention that I have. The first one is <clears throat> listed in part two. It explains the gas measuring device. A Dwyer model RMC gas flow meter was used to measure the H2O2 mixture flow rate flowing into the engine with an accuracy of plus or minus 0.5 liters per minute. The only concern that I have is these uh, gas flow meters that are being used aren't necessarily, in my opinion, accurate to measure the correct flow rate of the hydrogen-oxygen gas mixture. That is because this does not take into account the different density of the hydrogen-oxygen mixture. I am not completely familiar with the Dwyer model RMC gas flow meter that was used. If it was not properly calibrated for hydrogen-oxygen gas mixture in that proper two-thirds ratio, the volume may be of question. That is the only item of contention that I have with that measuring device.